Last week when I left you headed for California for Glenn's funeral, and you'll see some of that later in the video, uh, we were just around the corner down here with the excavator cleaning this ditch. As you can see, we've got all the trees down, Jake's been cleaning the ditch, we've had the grader on top of the bank trying to uh, smooth things up and slope the outside a little bit better but it's still pretty marginal it's still pretty wet everything that's been coming out of the ditch is uh, pretty muddy stuff and it takes a few days for it to dry out but I don't know what the weather is like where you're at but our weather certainly isn't cooperating either uh, one day we have rain the next day we have snow so we need the weather to straighten up a little bit Okay, you can see I made it down this far with the grader and then I just fell off. That's where Jake started for the day. And like I say, this stuff's been covered in the weeds. Some of it still had a little snow and ice in it. So it takes a couple days before I can get on it with the grader and smooth it out. Somebody made a comment I should be using the excavator to do all that and not the grader, but... I'm here to tell you, in an hour I can make more road, nice flat level road, so the excavator can stay up level and he doesn't have to waste any time uh, creating a road. I can do ten times more road than the excavator can, so that's why I do it. There's a, there's a tool for every job and uh, I like to use the right tool and this works good for our business, so that's why I do it. But Jake is, uh, he's progressing on down. Uh, next week you'll see him clear down through the trees here. Uh, he's got all these uh, big willow trees out and he's clear down towards the bottom and we're just about finished with this. As soon as it dries out, we'll be able to uh, grade it and finish it. Off in the distance you can see the mountains. I've had a lot of people that think it's flat here. Yes, it is out in the valley. But right over there is the Rocky Mountain Range, and on a good sunny day, I can see the Grand Tetons. Let me show you a picture of the Grand Tetons. Okay, these are the Grand Tetons right here, taken with my cell phone. Those are not clouds. Those are the actual Grand Tetons. Okay, this is what it looks like finished. Let's have a look-see at what it looked like before we started. Okay, this is the uh, ditch before we started. It's a mess. Matt and Jake are shooting grade and control points. So as they go down through, they can cut grade. Here's all the trees. This is, this is where we destroyed that poor raccoon's house. Feel real bad about that. <laughs> anyway, when we get this done, I'll uh, show you a... a drone video of it completely finished. Pure Light Super Oxygen Technology. Pure Light. It is a name that you are going to hear a lot of over the coming years. Look it up. Pure-light.com. The technology is amazing. Pure Light is going to change the world we live in. It is going to make it better and safer. Visit online at pure-light.com. Hi, this is Dinesh D'Souza inviting you to join me in Idaho Falls at Melaleuca Headquarters on April 14th at 6 p.m. We'll talk about the issues facing you and all of America. There will be a giveaway and a silent auction. To get tickets, you will not want to miss this. Call now for tickets at 425-890-1771. That's 425-890-1771. Call now for tickets. Who's it all? 
you can teach him to dig in the sandbox and not your lawn. He's already 40 pounds. He's chasing his tail. Look at the size of his feet though. I mean they're huge. He's gonna be big. He'll be bigger than Klaus, won't he? Okay, we're back up on our uh, farm cleanup project here. This is the pond we dug and put the box in. This is the ditch that uh, we moved. The old ditch was out in the middle, went through the middle of the whole property, kind of a swamp. And today we've got the 88 out, here, out of here. We're going to move the last... Uh, the Wabco out of here, the tr haul truck's going to leave. your motor running head out on the highway looking for adventure and whatever comes our way yeah I gotta go make it happen take the world in a loving place fire all of the guns and pumps and explode into space and then today we're gonna come in with both scrapers and we're going to start push-pulling and skimming 
some dirt off this side of the field because it's really good deep dirt and finish filling the swell and cleaning things up. But this will be the ditch that will carry any wastewater from the pond, excess water. And it's going to come all the way down to this corner and then take a turn straight south along the fence line. You can see out in the field all the dirt mounds. Well, this field is just full of gophers. Bad. So they're going to have quite a problem cleaning up some gophers. Anyway, so the ditch comes all the way down here and then dumps into the... There's a swell right here. And it'll go down along these trees. And then it's going to come back into this pond right here in the trees. And then from there it's going to drain uh, under the road over there and then on back down into the river. But our, our big job today is to finish filling up this swell, clean everything up. This side over here is not deep dirt. This is uh, just under the surface, probably a foot, is the, the gravel like you see me haul. We call it pit run gravel. Anyway, this whole valley is just covered in it under the soil because we're so close to the river. But this is where the old homestead and the house sat. And so we're going to take some dirt and come over here and try to cover up this mess. And then right here where you see the different colored grass, it looks like it burned all the time last year. This is really super close to gravel. And uh, this is not going to farm well. The only way to fix this is to go out here where the deep dirt is and strip all the dirt off to gravel. Come over here and dig all the gravel out and go put it in the hole. And then cover it with about two feet of dirt. Then bring the excess dirt over and cover the gravel. Just kind of do a switcheroo. So Matt's just pulled in with the scraper. He's going to put some oil in the truck and we're going to run that home. And then we'll be back here to go to scraping. And then we'll finally be done with this project. Got some motor running.
fine for one load. Now it just smokes black, won't run. So I got good fuel pressure. I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to try to drain the water separator and see what's in there. I don't know, it doesn't look bad. It's clean. That's why I was wondering if it maybe wasn't had water in it or something. I don't know how I'm gonna get it. Okay, if I got some paper towels in there. Okay, the scraper uh, started puffing smoke real bad. You saw that. I uh, took the air cleaner out. It's not really that plugged. I took the safety out. What I did is while I had the safety out, I started it. And all you can hear is screaming air sucking through there. There's no turbo whistle. There's nothing. So I just got done taking the boot off between the elbow and the turbo. Put a wrench on there. Okay. She seized up move that much but that's it I think it's kaput what do you think what turbo schlager is kaput turbo has seized and we are done for the day we was out here uh, moving a little dirt two scrapers now we're down to one time to go get the filthy whore I have never ever in my life had one do that uh, so I don't know what's wrong with it but I'm gonna have to call Jim Blaylock and get a, another one coming but right now but right now I'm just gonna have to go home and get the filthy whore and tough it out on the whore to get this job done because they want to get tearing this ground up and get grain planted in it even though there's snow on the mountains over there still and they've also they sprayed it with roundup yesterday so fun 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 okay this old girl has not run in months and the other one's blown a turbo so let's see if she fires up and runs. Let's see how she runs. Rock truck, see if there's a uh, rock truck free in the fan. to neutral I get a signal to the neutral wire when you shift it I get nothing 
no signals to the other ones. That's why it's not shifting and not synchronizing. And the sync switch is always off? Yeah. So let's take this switch out. Balls. Ain't one thing, it's 50. Okay, it's a hell of a day at Anderson Construction today. We've chased our problem down to the slave switch on the tractor tranny. Uh, figured it was just this end. This is the synchronization wire. It wasn't that. It's not sending juice to the other terminals to synchronize it in those gears. This was full of water. You can see how badly corroded it is. So I'm gonna try to take it apart. We're gonna order a new one. I've taken these apart before and cleaned them up. It's quite a job. Anyway, if this was a computerized outfit, uh, what would you do? Okay, we've cleaned up the switch and it was pretty corroded in here. Anyway, this is the synchronization wire. This is the hot one. Okay, this is the neutral terminal. When it shifts, you go to first gear, it's gonna go over to this connector, which you'll notice is tied together with both of these because you got eight speeds in the front and you got four in the back. So when you're in first gear in the tractor, you're in first gear in the rear motor. When you go to second gear in the tractor, you're still in first gear in the rear. When you go to third gear in the tractor, now you're in second in the scraper. Fourth gear in the tractor, second in the scraper. Fifth gear, tractor, third gear scraper, and that's how it works. And every time this shifts, it rotates, sends a signal to the back to get it to shift and synchronize. Okay, we're fixed. It works. The rear engine uh, transmission is shifting. So I just got to put the box back on here. Uh, we've got a brand new switch and a harness coming from uh, Georgia overnight. So it'll be here tomorrow. turbos we're putting on right now.
knock it off. I'm sick of this. Gotta bust out the D9. A beautiful thing right here. You will go a long ways before you see this. Holy smokes. A man brought to church on his transport. Well, Glenn, you just go ahead and send me some business cards. I'm all jelotted up here. When I put this shirt and hat on today and went in to make dolls, I thought, somebody sees me, they're going to say, well, Jeff, you work for, who's this gelati outfit? You work for them now? Okay, got a registered letter from England. Don't know who this is from, but let's find out. It's, oh, cool. It says, uh, Peter E. Frost, agricultural contractor. Home address. Ooh, better not show his phone number in there. Not sure if you get this magazine in America, but thought you might enjoy reading it. We love the way you produce such good videos and love the music you add to them. I have had to invest in a set of headphones so I don't drive the whole house mad watching them. The drone filming is really classy and I must say you live in an amazing part of the world. My favorite piece of machinery is your Cat D9 plus your truck, of course. We run classic plant here in Kent, mainly for farming and grubbing. Awesome hat and calendar. Maybe you could let us know how we go about buying these. We are planning a road trip to America in 2019 so we can see in real life some of your great country. Kind regards, Peter, Marion and Peter Frost, Kent, England. Wow, that's awesome, Peter, thank you. Ooh, and he sent some equipment porn. Ooh, that's cool. Some English equipment porn. Earth moving with a passion, Jeremy Rowland. Wow, that is cool, a lot of nice pictures there. Wow. And they completely rebuilt them. Tore them clear down to nothing. Whew, I'm getting a woody already, Pete. Boing. <laughs> hey, got uh, another package to open. This is from Dan Kruger. I uh, met Dan back at uh, Mid America Truck Show. He likes my channel, he works at the Ford plant. And so he has sent me something he told me to enjoy. Can't wait to see what it is. Crap. Wowie! Oh, awesome. Awesome. He got, sent me some Ford hats. Dan, I love those. Those are nice hats. Those are really nice hats. Wow. Those are some high dollar dry duck. Those are cool hats. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate that. Also appreciate the little uh, gift that's in here. That is totally awesome, sir. You are you are very much appreciated. That's 
That is awesome. Cool, and your address. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna do exactly what you want. 100%, thanks Dan. Hey everybody, I'm back from California from Glenn's funeral. Uh, had an awesome time uh, with Vic and Lauren. Uh, Lauren, thank you for letting me and Tammy stay at your house. We had a, a great time with you. I wanna thank you and Vic for taking us around and uh, showing us beautiful Petaluma. Uh, that's a fantastic place if you've never seen it. Lots of rolling hills. Uh, we got to see the redwoods. That was awesome. I've never seen trees that big. Old uh, logger Wade, he'd have a he'd have a big old woody if he saw those trees. So I'm gonna keep you away from them. Anyway, uh, it was a great funeral and a great send off for Glenn. Uh, everybody's gonna miss him, and so. Just want to say thanks to everybody down there that showed us their hospitality. Uh, got some super great subscribers to talk about today. Start out with Frank Raymer. He's from Oroville. I don't know where Oroville is, Frank, but you can call him at BR549. Uh, Tony Pickrell from Boulevard, Missouri. Thank you, Tony. LJ from Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Thank you, LJ. Magnificent Shine One from Pekin, Illinois. Uh, Leadfoot Lurch from Kenmore, Washington. Kenmore, Washington. Is that where they make Kenmores? Uh, Lars Knutsen from Denmark. Lars, we have some Knutsens here. So you got family here, buddy. Uh, Dave Ewart. Uh, he's the lead burn logger. He's from Scotland. Uh, thanks for <laughs> subscribing, David. Skitter Kev from Ontario, Canada and N scale Rio Grande and CSX from New Zealand. That's a long handle, buddy. Uh, love my foreign subscribers. Uh, wanna see more of them. Like to see some from South America, uh, from the Caribbean, uh, from all over, from uh, Asia. Please send in your name, I'll put you on the whiteboard. Okay, down in the description below is my store. It's www.jpaydirt.com. You can go on there and get a calendar and a hat. We'll get it shipped out to you. Uh, just shipped off a calendar and a hat to Australia. Wanted to let my Australian subscribers know I can ship you the calendars and the hats. I shipped it to... Uh, Marion, which is South Australia, and it was $28 was also. If you want to get a hat and a calendar, it's not much money to send it there. Okay, I got some trucks to show you for truck time this week. This first one is from Michael Holcomb. Uh, he's got a 2002 W900. He said he found in a garage. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, Mike. In a garage? Uh, C15. 475, 18 speed trans, double frame, 14 two front end and 46,000 rears with KW8 bag. Only thing we didn't care for was the eight bag. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Would have rather had the new way. Yep, but hey, it was a truck. We couldn't pass it up. Here's some picks. Thanks, Mike. Okay, this next truck comes from Mike, AKA Sodbuster Jr. He says, greetings from West Michigan. My name is Mike and I thought I would pass along a couple pictures of my father's and my truck. We specialize in hauling agricultural commodities, whether it's in a grain hopper, reefer trailer, or tanker. In Michigan, we're allowed multi-axle trailers, which you'll see in the one picture. The first picture is of my dad's 2000 Pete 379 extended hood. It has 1.5 million on the clock currently. She's got a 550 2WS 3406 coupled to an 18 speed with 335 rears. Wow, that's fast. We've never touched this truck. It's 100% original still. Engine has been flawless and we're going to see just how far she will go. It is hooked to a seven axle Titan hopper. He can legally gross 153,000. The second pick is of my original 97 Pete 378. I bought this truck about a year ago with only 214,000 miles. It has a 550 
6TS3406E with a 13 speed and 390 rears. Lastly is a picture of my dad's first truck as an owner operator back in the 80s. It's a Pete 359. It had a B model with a 13 speed, uh, I recall. Sweet old truck and I wish we still had it. I would also like to say thanks for posting the videos. I do a do majority of our maintenance and repairs and have learned a couple things from you along the way which is super helpful, especially your series about switching your A-cert to single turbo. We've been on the fence about purchasing a new truck with an A-cert in it. I really enjoy seeing how things are done in other parts of the United States as well. Here in Michigan, we don't see that big of construction equipment usually. Best of luck to you, and be safe out there, driver. Well, thank you, Mike. That's awesome. Okay, this next truck uh, is from Charles Guntard. He's down there. He's down there in Louisiana, I think. I think he is a Louisiana. Anyway, this is his 04. Uh, Peterbilt, it's got a 13 speed, uh, 355 on black. And I know Charles got a cat in there because I've been talking to him. He's had some trouble. He's got some problems with it. And he's having a terrible time figuring things out. Looks like Charles, like you do a lot of bulk work there. That's a bulk dry tank bulk tank whatever what do you call those pneumatic pneumatics the word I'm looking for anyway Charles I hope you get that figured out okay this next truck is from Jeffrey Henning out of Oklahoma he said this is his personal truck it was an 08 KWT 800 uh, white hood IXS Cummins fully deleted putting about 700 to the ground 18 speed main 4 speed auxiliary 52,000 pound full locking rears, 456 ratio on New Way Air Ride. It was a bad bitch. I'll bet it was, Jeff. Uh, this is a 657 cat scraper on a Kalen Seibert 13 axle. That must be a coal scraper. What in the world did that weigh? Uh, this next picture is a Terex RT 130 on a beam. Uh, the next picture is a windmill nacelle on the Kalen. What does a, what do those nacelles weigh, Jeff? And this last one is a 518 link belt. Anyway, thanks, Jeff. Uh, appreciate those pictures. That's awesome. And finally, these la this last picture. These ain't truckers, but these two gals are from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Christina and Sheena. And I can't remember which one, but one of your dad's drove truck. And so we visited about trucks uh, at the Galt House at the Mid-America Truck Show. And I thought I was doing really well till their boyfriend showed up. <laughs> anyway, it was awesome to meet you, Christina and Sheena, and your boyfriends. Uh, had a good time there visiting with you. So uh, thanks for introducing yourself and thanks for taking a picture with me.